Alright, I finally made it to the last gym. We did it, Pikachu! Shut up! Ooh, quite the muscular challenger you are. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. What type do you fight with? Ooh, the other fairy type. Ah, uh, okay. Then I challenge you to a battle! Pokemon must be the most popular franchise back then, in the 90s. And even now, what's not to love? Cuddly little monsters they can beat up and imprison them within small balls. Ah, uh, look at how cute they are, aren't you Gyarados? Goo. The TV show was real fun, and addictive too. It was innocent and totally harmless. The idea of Pokemon in the games was that you, as an adventurer, were old enough, being 10, to go on an adventure to try and catch them all. The parents in the Pokemon universe are the worst, sending children into the open world that's filled with ferocious monsters. But at least you were always sent on your journey with one starter Pokemon. You always had the choice for a fire, water or a grass type starter. The game then throws you into an open world with a Pokedex to try and catch them all. I think that there's a trademark to that last sentence. I mean... I've already said it twice. Eh, it's fine. Nintendo recently released the remakes of the Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire for Nintendo 3DS. And for celebrating that, they also released the Pokemon Pinball game for Nintendo Wii U. That last one, that's the one we are going to review. Sorry if you thought that we were going to talk about a worthy Pokemon game. Eh, they're okay with it. Pokemon Pinball Ruby and Sapphire was originally released for the Nintendo Game Boy Advance in 2003. The Game Boy Advance makes an excellent device for a pinball game. You don't have to play it for very long and quick session gaming is possible. The game uses the left D-pad and the A button as left and right flipper, but I configured it into the shoulder buttons, making it a lot easier to play. The pinball tables look excellent, although they seem a bit simple, thinking that it would be a lot better with maybe an extra table or some more content but its graphics are decent and the Pokemon are also presented well. The game uses some simple tunes, but that gets repetitive real soon. The pinball sounds are lifelike, but also something that grows tired real fast. We've all played on a pinball machine at least once in our life, so you know the concept. This one, however, lets you catch wild Pokemon, and instead of a lead ball, you move a Pokeball around the field. The Pokeball can be upgraded to a Great Ball, an Ultra Ball, and even a Master Ball. This increases your multiplier, earning you more points with a higher upgraded ball. The ball moves with a nice frame rate over the table. There aren't any frame drops, so the game plays smoothly. The objective of the game is to fill up your Pokedex by catching every Pokemon available in this game. You do this by entering the Sharpedo on the Ruby stage, and in the Sapphire version by entering Whalmer. You can't do it all the time, you have to build it up. And when it says you can enter, a wild Pokemon appears. Depending on which area you are, different Pokemon appear. If it's in play, try hitting the upper Poke Bumpers to reveal its identity and then catch it by smashing the ball into it multiple times. Another way to catch these little pricks is by hatching them from eggs. On the ruby table you'll have to push the cynic whale into its nest so that the egg can hatch, letting the Pokemon out and run like an idiot over the table. 
Doing the same with your ball, smashing it, that is, will capture it. It's pretty cruel that you trap every Pokemon in one ball, but hey, that's only in this game. On the Sapphire table, some sort of egg hatching machine needs to be turned on multiple times, and then it's the same old song. If there is no egg available, shooting your ball into it again will make a new egg appear. The last part of obtaining Pokemon is by evolution. You need to shoot the ball around the table sometimes where it has Evo. And then the Pokemon will change so that you can change the Pokemon, caught in the same game and make it evolve. If the Pokemon is just a Pokemon, you can use it for buying things like ball savers. If a Pokemon was caught, you get the choice to play a minigame. This may vary from playing basketball with Sfeels, tackling a Cacleon, chasing Duskulls or face off against a legendary Pokemon. Being that the game is fun to play doesn't mean you have to go out and buy it. It's fun, I give you that. But after a couple of plays, you get tired of staring at the same tables. Filling up the Pokedex can be something you can try to achieve, but only if you're a hardcore Pokemon fan. That's right, the game does deliver on some points, but it should never become more than just a game to fill up your dull moments. We think that this game should barely pass for a must try, and we mean barely. Because we do like Pokemon and Pinball, but this was something that could have been much bigger. So our rating is must try. I'm Mel. I'm Phil. And I'm Jeff. And we from the Arcade Athletes would like to wish you happy holidays and a happy new year. Thanks for watching our Christmas episode. We hope you have had a wonderful time this year. If you're feeling generous, please feel free to like and subscribe. Our Facebook page can be found below in the description. Click on one of these two boxes and it will take you to another video. Click on our logo to go to our channel. Leave a comment and let us know what you think of us. See you next time.